Joining me now, Leon Panetta, CIA director, former CIA director, former defense secretary in the Obama administration, former White House chief of staff for President Clinton, among other roles, and Democratic Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin from Michigan, who serves on the Armed Services Committee and is running for the Senate, who also served at the Pentagon under Leon Panetta and at the CIA before running for Congress. Welcome both. I mean, I've gotten to know Rachel and Jonathan very well for the worst possible reasons over these 10 months, it is heartbreaking. And they have advocated this is not a role that they want. Again, Secretary Panetta, uh, Sec Secretary Blinken came home yesterday after the ninth shuttle since October 7th, unable to seal the deal. Yeah, uh, Andrea, I just met with uh, the parents uh, on the floor, uh, and I told them that, uh, you know, my, my heart is breaking for them and what they're going through. As the, as the father of three sons, I can't imagine having a son uh, be a hostage, and particularly in a situation where right now it doesn't seem like it's moving in the right direction. That has to be very frustrating to those parents. Do you think that Benjamin Netanyahu, who keeps throwing up obstacles, as does Hamas, but in this latest iteration, there was the assassination of the Hamas negotiator, Hania, a terrorist, but someone who is, travels freely, lives in Doha, negotiates, and he, since he was killed in, in Tehran, there is the possibility of Iranian retaliation, expanding the war. You know, we've been saying this a lot, but this is a very critical point at which if we are not able to finally get across the line and get a ceasefire uh, and be able to release the hostages and be able to do what's needed in order to deal with the victims in the future of that area, I think the alternative is going to be a wider war. Because if Iran does strike at Israel and lives are lost, there's no mistake as to what's going to happen. We, we, Israel, the United States, will be in a wider war. How do you keep the focus here as you run for the Senate, Congresswoman? How do you keep the focus on the economy, which is the issue that most people, Michiganers and all that care about when protesters are trailing the Democrats on the campaign trail? Well, look, I mean, people can have lots of different interests. I, 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 it's not hard to keep economy uh, front and center because every single Michigander, Michigander is talking to me about it wherever I go. And it's at all stages of life. Young people trying to figure out if they're going to be able to afford school and have a middle class life middle-aged people who can't buy a home for their kids, and older people who can't have Medicare and Social Security going as, as far as it used to. So uh, it, it's not hard to keep it on the front burner. But look, we're a party of a big tent. We got a lot of voices in this party. If there's anything this convention has shown us is that we have a lot of diversity of experience in this party. And I think, um, to me, you got to meet people where they are. That, and we have a very large Arab and Muslim American population in Michigan, and they want to be heard. Um, so I, I, I don't think the two things are kind contradictory. And is, is, is there a reason, well, let's just put it this way, is there a way to translate economic concerns and get that across? Because Kamala Harris still trails Donald Trump on who, in all the polls, on who would handle the economy better, despite all the achievements of the Biden administration, Biden-Harris administration, and the decline in inflation. Yeah, I think, look, we all know inflation is a real thing. I mean, you can't, it's not, you can't say it's not a real thing um, and it's affecting people. And, you know, if I have a, a one more Harvard economist tell me um, that everything is great, I'm going to have to depart the room. I mean, it, it really, um, you know, talk to the people on the ground and how their paychecks aren't going as far as they used to. But um, the idea that Donald Trump is going to fire some magic bullet and then we're going to have sunshine and rainbows um, and a perfect economy is a lot of smoke. Um, and so I think it's about each, you know, uh, both Harris and Trump have to just lay out, lay out specifically what you're going to do. Tell the American people, be transparent. You know, and, and Donald Trump was in my district while I've been here. Um, he's not talking about the economy. He's talking about, uh, you know, an imaginary massive spike in crime that we're just not seeing in my state. So I want them to lay out what they're going to do and be practical. Just reason with people. That's what people want. Reasonable leaders. Leon Panetta. 
Donald Trump is also saying that Vladimir Putin thinks that Kamala Harris is a joke. What kind of foreign policy you know, experience does she have beyond being on the Senate Intelligence Committee and being vice president for almost four years? Um, do you have, what kind of leader do you think she, she would be, commander in chief? Look, I think when you're vice president and you've been a partner to Joe Biden, uh, she knows the world. She's visited with 150 world leaders. She's gone abroad. She's helped negotiate. She understands the issues. But more importantly, she appreciates the sacrifice of our military. I mean, to have Donald Trump call them losers and suckers, uh, it just it, in my book, he doesn't deserve to be commander in chief if he feels that way about our veterans. So Kamala understands our veterans. She understands the issues related to our security. But most importantly, she's going to be a lot tougher on Putin than Trump will ever be. And what he said about the Medal of Honor. Yeah, I, you know, to have him, I mean, he keeps denying that he called them losers, suckers and losers. And then he comes out and says, oh, civilian medals are more important than military medals because the guys receiving military medals are all shot up or dead. Yes, that's right, because they're sacrificing their life for our country. They're not losers. They're heroes.